Today, we are introducing two special vector spaces, the kernel and the range. These are better explained through geometric examples. So let's get started. This transformation projects the space on the z-axis as shown. Accordingly, we got two questions to answer. First, where did the vectors on R3 go? Second, are there any vectors that were mapped to the zero vector? Let's take one question at a time. Well, we had some vectors in 3D, and what the transformation did was that it squished the space into a plane, so the vectors were taken from a space and squeezed by the transformation to become in a plane. The set wherein the outputs land is called the image vector space or the range vector space that is denoted as follows. Now, we have to answer the second question. Trivially, we can tell that the zero vector in R3 is going to be one of the vectors that are mapped to the zero vector in R2. That's due to matrix vector multiplication. Yet, we want to search for other vectors. And it turns out that for every linear transformation, there is a subspace of its domain that collects all of the vectors that are mapped to the zero vector. However, this doesn't imply that we can't find a transformation whose kernel contains the zero vector only, i.e. only the zero vector from the domain is mapped to the zero vector in the image. To understand the concept more accurately, a couple of examples is needed. Looking at this transformation, one can observe that all of the vectors that fall on the line y equal minus 2x got transformed to the zero vector, which means the kernel is the set of vectors with coordinates x and minus 2x. That's infinity many vectors, right? The image set now is clearly the vectors that land on the line y equal to x. An interesting and special case can be when all of the vectors are transformed to the zero vector, which means the kernel vector space is the domain itself, and the image vector space contains only the zero vector. The reason as to why I'm calling these sets vector spaces is that they are closed under addition and scalar multiplication. That's better proven algebraically. We can see that if two vectors map to the zero vector, the sum of the multiple of the vectors still goes to the zero vector. Also, the sum of the multiple of two vectors in the image set is still in the image set due to the fact that we could find a corresponding pre-image vector of that vector. For more about linear algebra, check these videos. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons.